One thing that can really easily go wrong when making macarons is adding in too much food coloring, especially too much gel food coloring, and especially when trying to make red macarons. So let's take a look. I have all my regular tools and ingredients here using that standard French method I like in my home kitchen. And I have a red and a burgundy gel food colorant here. Since again, I think a lot of people happen into or stumble into this mistake when they're trying to get a really deep red color. So first off, I'm just going to be creating a really stiff peak using that French method for my meringue. And I am just going to show you here right now. I have 99 grams of food colorant in those two bottles. So I'm going to start off relatively small um, and try to demonstrate what might actually happen in your kitchen and let's see how things escalate as they go so so far i've got a pretty normal amount of red in there i've got a really stiff peak it's looking really nice that meringue is really nice it's not jiggling anywhere it's not over whipped um so this is looking really good i've got my dry ingredients there ready to go but as you can tell especially adding in all that air it's not looking really deep red. This is a pretty pastel looking red. So let me dump in a little bit more food coloring as I start to introduce my dry ingredients into the meringue. I like to add my dry ingredients in about three additions, and if you want more information, definitely check out one of my other videos. Again, I've got a red color now, but it's still not so dark. So as I'm adding in the last amount of those dry ingredients, and I'm about to start macronaging, I've got a pretty hefty amount of the red food colorant in there, but I want to deepen this, get it to a little bit more of an intense dark red and i'm just going to dump in some of that burgundy colorant here as soon as i can't see those dry ingredients now definitely if you keep adding colorant here continuously another thing to watch out for is over mixing you gotta be really really careful that you're not over mixing as you add things in if you're trying to avoid streaks and all of that so i dumped in a ton of burgundy and you can already just tell from the amount of moisture i'm adding in that this is probably not going to go so well and speaking of moisture that is the biggest issue with adding in too much food coloring if you're adding in a lot of food coloring you might notice that when you bite into that macaron your mouth is going to be colored whatever color your macaron is or you might notice that especially with things like red um, or some other colors you can taste the colorant uh, but more than anything, when you are adding in gel food colorant, even though it's quite concentrated, you're adding in a lot of moisture. Moisture, of course, is the nemesis of macarons. And you might notice that if you have a humid kitchen, if you have moist ingredients, you might be running into some problems. And if you have too much gel food colorant, especially though, you know, if you dumped a whole jar of powdered food coloring, you could also run into some issues. Um, it's just gonna mess up that process so let's weigh my colorants again i'm at 84 grams i put 15 grams of gel food coloring into a batch that has 75 grams of egg whites so that is a super super high ratio of food colorant to meringue um definitely definitely not a good idea I do just want to point out here as I am piping, you can see that even though it's looking really shiny, it is definitely a very moist batter. I did not over mix. That is not a problem we're running into. As I pipe, my batter is staying uh, pretty nicely where it was. I got to that ribbon stage, but I'm not creating like a pancake batter. So if you saw in my over mixing or over macronaging explanation video, that can certainly cause a ton of problems. But right now we're isolating that. What if you just add too much food colorant? Now, unfortunately or fortunately, I have achieved this beautiful burgundy red color. Seriously, it's amazing. I think it's what a lot of people are looking for 
when they accidentally end up with too much food coloring. Now, I will say that usually it takes me about 15 to 25 minutes in my home kitchen for my macarons to develop a skin. I was waiting for like 35 to 40 minutes before I put these in because there was so much moisture. It took so long for the skin to form. I then baked them like normal. I added a little bit of extra time. Usually I go for about 16 to 18 minutes. Um, and definitely I went on the side of like 18 minutes. Coming out of the oven, they're actually looking okay. I was kind of shocked. I thought the tops would be a little bit rougher. Um, and actually inside, if I very gently peeled it up, they were actually okay. Now these macarons are completely cool, it's completely room temperature, but as you can see, while it has a really sturdy top, while the bottom at first glance looks like it's maybe okay, the inside looks full. With the barest hint of pressure, I can actually like push my thumb all the way from the bottom through the macaron, and in many places of my tray, um, and especially without being super, super careful and gentle, the bottom just stuck to my sill pat because the inside was so moist not underbaked there was just so much moisture from having so much gel food colorant in there this is another macaron that i made this same day so it's the same amount of you know time since baking and all of that and as you can see it on the yellow macaron i can press my thumb into the bottom and you can see a little bit of movement and a tiny dent but I shouldn't be able to press my entire thumb into it. And as you saw, th this is not a hollow shell. I don't have a huge air pocket that this is just pressing up into. It's just so squishy and moist inside because of too much food coloring. I would say that this really, really soft interior is going to be the biggest side effect for too much food coloring. But, and certainly that will cause even more problems as you go to fill this, they will be matured basically immediately because the shell is really not crispy. These shells might get a bit soggy no matter what your filling is, and probably they would need to be consumed within the first couple of days, or they might just turn to complete mush even in your refrigerator. Um, the other problems that didn't show up in this video, but if you used even more, or like I mentioned, if the too much colorant was also coupled with over macronaging to get everything incorporated or all kinds of things like that, um, definitely you might be seeing too large of feet, really soft, weak tops like we saw in the over macronaging video, or macarons where the very top part of the shell actually detaches from the kind of meaty inside and base of the shell, again, because that very top shell um, might be fully developed and fully baked, but the inside holds so much moisture, it just like can't quite stay attached. So definitely too much food colorant can cause a ton of problems. And I think the two times when this, you will see this the most commonly is either number one with red macaron shells like this. So I would advise using some cocoa powder to help uh, deepen the tone of the shell naturally in addition to the red and when you are dividing up your batter for character macarons so you have a really small amount of batter and you might eyeball or dump in what to you looks like a normal amount of food coloring but the ratio of food coloring to batter is actually way too high so be extra careful in those two situations if you have any questions about this or other variables that can go wrong with your macarons don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future tutorials or explanations until next time have a wonderful day bye